listening to the Narrative Podcast with Halsey Allen. The Narrative Podcast is changing the narrative one episode at a time. Hello and welcome everyone to the Narrative Podcast. Welcome all my narrators. Hello everyone uh, brand new to the podcast. Thank you for tuning in today. So, if you're new to the podcast, um, let me just give you a brief synopsis about what this podcast is about. Well, for starters, it's called The Narrative Podcast, and it's called The Narrative Podcast for a reason. Um, Basically, this is a positive platform, and I change the narrative one episode at a time by destroying negative black stereotypes. And the way I do it is basically by providing positive frames of reference about black people and black culture. So why the... uh, do I feel I need to do that? Well, it's very simple. The uh, media um, depicts black people and black culture in a negative light, and they always uh, generate and perpetuate negative black stereotypes. Um, basically, they're always um, hypercriminalizing black males, hypersexualizing black females, and um, basically making us look all kind of bad in the media, have us, um, you know, giving us basically a, um, a misrepresentation of us. So I want to create a platform where I wanted to, uh, you know, dispel misinformation about um, black people and black culture and just basically highlight in, um play up our strengths and showcase all the things that we're doing right instead of always, you know, showing everything that we're doing wrong and um, basically having this just look and sound ratchet all the time. And there's there's just so much more to us. We're so much more diverse, um, you know. We are a contribution to the... uh, human experience, not just to drain on the resources, because that's what the media paints us out to be, just, you know, um, a class of people that are uh, a drain on the resources. They always want to show us in violence, always want to show us at each other's throat, not knowing how to cohabitate peacefully amongst each other. Um, not having any unity, uh, you know, not celebrating each other's achievements. So that's basically what this platform is. It's just a um, just hot highlight in a showcase everything positive that is black, basically. So hope that you know clarifies it for you. Um, so on this podcast, I break each section. I have, um, all my content is broken down into sections and I will describe, you know, what each section is about as I come to them. Cause you know, this is all just trial and error. I just started doing this like last year. So I'm still fairly green, but you know, when I first started, I didn't even have a format. I now have a format. I now have a um, professional bumper, and I got, you know, some guests in the works, and just, you know, it's really been taken off since I've been doing this. Um, so, like, a whole lot of stuff is uh, manifesting right now. So, trust me when I'm telling, tell, telling you, like, I'm building momentum, stuff's happening. So, yeah. All right. Um, up first, my first section is um, an open invites. 
to any and all black owned business owners, if you are or know of any black owned businesses that need or would like some free promotion, please hit me up, Halsey Allen at Passion Webmail at poeticpassion.host and type promo in the subject bar in the body of the email. Tell me a little bit about yourself, your business, your product or service. And, you know, I'll plug it on here for absolutely free. And the reasoning I'm doing that is to, A, um, promote Black-owned. That's, you know, the core of what I do here, promote Black-owned. Um, keep that Black dollar circulating in the um, Black community. Reach one, teach one. That's what that section is all about. Um, the type of types of businesses that I like to uh, promote is, you know, black people to take care of the black community. So, you know, that's why I like, would like you to um, give you give me a little bit of background about yourself, a little quick brief bio. Because there's nothing worse than, you know, a business owner that doesn't have a black owned proprietor that doesn't have a sense of community. So I don't want to, you know, really promote anybody that's not giving back to the community that doesn't feel they have to. You know, if you're if you know you're in the black community and all your patrons are black, you kind of owe the community. So you need to be hiring your own. You need to be doing some type of um, philanthropy, some type of um, thing, something to impact and empower the community that you are rooted in. Because if you don't, you are just as bad. Now you're worse than the oppressive bloodsuckers that we're currently being, um, you know, the target of right now. So like you working for the ops, if you're not hiring your own or doing anything to impact or empower the black community. All right. So next section is, you know, a contest that I'm currently uh, promoting just for this podcast. I call it the Chew On This podcast or the Chew On This challenge, excuse me, for the narrative podcast. And entry is 110% free. I'm not charging any money. And all I want you to do is basically to participate in the topic. I went in the topic is shopping while black. I would like for, you know, the listeners since I don't have a hotline yet or um, any real guests right now, currently, it's just a way to just tap in with you and just, you know, listener participation. That's what this contest is designed for, just to show me that you're um, listening to my own podcast. And for that, you will be rewarded. I will send you a bulk supply of your favorite snack just simply by participating in the uh, topic. And the topic is Shopping While Black. What I want you to do is share your most recent, most up-to-date Shopping While Black experience. And the reason why I want you to do that is A, to keep the conversation going, because that's something that's happened to all black people all over the world. No matter what state you live, no matter what city you live, no matter what country you live in, all black people at one time or at one time or another has experienced a bad experience at um, a retailer. They was either um, following you around the store, acting like you was going to steal something, um, you know, giving you bad customer service, or just plain old didn't want you up in there. 
So that's something we've all experienced, ignoring you. You know what I mean? So that's something we've all experienced. Now, some people would say, well, that's what you get for taking your your business somewhere that you're not wanted. And to people like that, I say, you know, we don't. It's not a univer. It's not universal across the board yet. Black owned neighborhoods. We're getting there, but we're still we ha- still haven't been restored to the um, prominence we once had before segregation. We had all black laundromats. We had um, black restaurants. We had, um, you know, anything you can think of that you would need to leave your home for. We had it in our community. Like you can just like go outside, go down the street, you know, to get you something to eat, um, watch a movie, go to a movie theater, black owned movie theater, you know, all within like walking distance from your home or, you know, if you had to drive a a short distance, it wasn't too far, probably like five or 10 mile radius if you, you know, was, you know, went by vehicle or public transportation. But, um, you know, we don't have that anymore. And as a result of that, you know, we get treated badly. So we got definitely got to keep the conversation going. I know you got some stories that you can share. I would like to um, read your stories. And for that, I will, you know, gladly um, reward you just for entering the contest. So to enter the contest, hit me up at that same email address that I just gave for the uh, free promotion, except here's how we separate them. We separate them through the um, subject bar for the uh, shopping while uh, black con- or um, chew on this contest, type chew on this slash shopping while black slash or dash, but just, you know, shopping while black or um, chew on this slash or dash shopping while black in that uh, subject bar. And then the body of the email include your most recent up to date shopping while black experience and along with your mailing address. So I know where to send your snack and what type of snack do you want? Like give me the specifics about what type of snack you would like and I will get that to you. And ideally, when I get your order, I try to go online and try to find a black owned vendor, you know, to purchase your snack from the bulk supply of your snacks. So I wouldn't just send you a single snicker if you said you wanted a snicker or if you said you wanted some potato chips, I wouldn't send you one bag. I want to send you like a bulk supply of it. So like in the event that I can't find a black owned vendor, I would most likely be getting your snack from like uh, Costco's or uh, Sam's Club. So that's it for the um, Chuanis contest. And um, if you can help it, please don't try to send me more than six paragraphs. I do not want to read novels. I just want to know what happened. I just want to know what happened, what type of service, you know, did you get, like, just share briefly. So basically just summarize your shopping while black experience, just a quick summary of what happened. I don't want to, you know, the blow by blow at five o'clock, I got out my car. Then I circled the block. Then I went to, I don't want it to read like a novel. I just want to know what happened, what day, what city state, you know, for specifics, 
to give context. How was they acting? How did they treat you? You know, could you tell it was definitely racial? It wasn't just like poor customer service. Was it like specifically because you were black? And that's all I wanted to know. All right. On to my next section. Now, this is the section where I actually be highlighting some black owned businesses. And in this section, uh, black owned business highlight. Here are the criteria in which I select my uh, black owned businesses that I highlight. They got to meet all or at least some in this category, but they most definitely have to, um, you know, meet at least uh, um, one, one, one um, characteristic, qualifying characteristic to uh, for me to highlight. So the first. Um, Characteristic is, is it black owned? Obviously, it's black owned. This is, this is like the black podcast. So, you know, all businesses that I highlight are black owned. Um, they hire their own. They do some type of philanthropy or giving back. Uh, they have some type of unique story on how they got started. Um, types of unique stories and like looking for like people that really just came out of the mud you know maybe they didn't have um, people like with little to no uh, college education or like if they do or if they are highly educated the business the um, business they founded wasn't you know in line with what they went to school with that's you know a passion project, just something that they wanted to do, and they found a way to do it. So, and the reason why I do, you know, highlight highlight black-owned businesses is just again to highlight and showcase our ingenuity, um, show provide that positive frame of reference that we are captains of industry, that we are studious, and you know can be self-reliant, have that tenacity that we can rise above our um, circumstances. Because the way they portray us in the media is just like we're all, you know, destitute, um, complicit with being on uh, public assistance and um, not trying to do for self. That's how we're always portrayed in the media. So the types of um, black owned businesses that I would like to highlight is, you know, the example of overcoming adversity. So they figured it out. They created um, multi-million dollar platforms or, you know, a good hundred, good four or five figures at bare minimum a year for their numbers that they're hitting, you know, not in debt, um, impacting and empowering the community. So those are the types of um, black owned businesses that I try to highlight. Some, and, you know, some with a, a, a rich story. So I usually also have a thing. So this month's theme, or all, it's going to be like from this month all the way to the end of August, is summertime. So these next home, these next couple of uh, businesses that I will be highlighting are just black-owned businesses that fall in stride with that theme of summertime. So I don't know about you, but when I think summertime, like one of the first um, things that come to mind 
is barbecue. Like even though like right now I don't eat, haven't eaten meat for like uh, six years, but I'm still black. Like it's just nostalgia. It's just something like every summer you look forward to um, that BBQ. You know, we have, you know, little barbecues, throw something on the grill just to um, socialize with your people. Have little block mixers and get togethers and parties and functions around centered around that grill. You know, that's that grill is just part of black culture. That's probably where that little saying go, comes from, invited to the cookout, you know, because that's just, you know, so a part of our culture. But um, anyway, so like one of the um, most important things you need at the cookout, it's not the definitive thing, but is really important is that BBQ sauce. So these next couple of uh, black owned businesses um, are businesses that specializes in barbecue sauce and, you know, seasonings. So like I said, these uh, next ones these next couple people, they fall right in stride with my theme and meet some other criteria that I just rifled off earlier about the types of um, businesses I like to try to highlight. So the first black owned business highlight would be coming to you from a young lady named Tyler Simone Creighton, and her biz- business is Sienna Sauce. And the website is SiennaSauce.com. Telephone number is 832-518-5500. And this is a very kind of special story. This young lady was um, all but 16 years old when she started this business. Um, 17 when she actually got funded for the business. Um, It's a really, you know, touching story. Uh, She got her uh, funding on um, the TV show Shark Tank. She was uh, rewarded $100,000 from Kendra Scott. And basically, you know, she was without a home, living in New York at a brownstone. And they was renting. And uh, they was forced to leave uh, because um, the home owner wanted to give the house to somebody in their family. There's somebody in their family needed the house and um, they had, they basically had to move. And so they was without a home for like, really like over a year. But um, she says she was inspired by watching the show Shark Tank and want to do something to, you know, get out of that situation. She was also inspired by her mother, um, What is his mom's name? Monique. She said her mom was uh, ignite, helped her ignite the entrepreneurial spirit as well. Um, she was doing everything in her power to try to get them into a new home. Um, she was making baskets for a short amount of time and selling baskets and um, working, uh, you know, multiple jobs and then eventually they ended up getting an apartment but you know went on the shark tank and then as the rest of the, as they say is history 
Um, she has written, if you go on her website, you see she has her own cookbook. And then something else that's uh, really unique that really kind of grab made me gravitate to her story is on her website, she's actually offering shares of her company. She's inviting people to invest in her brand. And she's also teaching, you know, not only offering you to invest in the brand, but she's trying to make you like, you know, a comprehensive shareholder, teaching you, you know, like all about her business and, you know, teach you how to read the sales projections and all that stuff that comes with it. And you can make your own, you know, determination. Do you want to pour more into the stock? Or what you want to do with your share of her company? So essentially, she's a, she's still like crowdfunding. She's inviting people to invest in her brand, which is very, you know, it's ballsy and, you know, risk taking and very uh, shrewd business sense. So to be that young, to have that, you know, mindset already is more than amazing. So give it up for young misses. Creighton and the Sienna Sauce Company. Oh, and then I can't like close out her section without, you know, telling you that she does a whole lot of philanthropy. She, you know, shares her experience about being without a home, being homeless, um, talks to the youth, um, does all kinds of uh, functions and um, pays into charity and, you know, definitely does her part. Very tenacious really well-spoken, articulate young lady. And, you know, her story is very inspiring. Now, the next story is um, comes to you from a uh, A lady by the name of um, Argia. And this is um, Select Brands and it's Mumbo Sauce. It's currently founded, or um, the current CEO's name is Argia B. Collins. So her descendant of the originator for that brand. And it's been around since the 1950s. I didn't feel the need to go into it incredibly detailed because, um, you know, all you gotta do is go to mumbosauce.com and you can read the about section. Uh, they have like a really long standing history. So it's, you know, it's in stride with everything that I'm doing in this section. It's black owned, it's family owned and operated. It has a rich history. Um, so on the page you will see like a young Jesse Jackson back in the day supporting their brand. Um, all kinds of historical figures. Um, I think they got a picture of a uh, Cab Calloway, um, I believe that's him. Somebody in the fedora. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, they got a lot of uh, historical black people that have endorsed that uh, brand over the years and it's still currently going. It's withstood the test of time. It's been around since the 1950s. It has a very rich unique, nostalgic story. So just go to that website and click the uh, About Us tab and to read it in full and in depth 
Um, so they definitely also give back to the community. They pay into uh, charitable causes. And um, yeah, so select brands. Argea, Argea Bees Mumbo Sauce at mumbosauce.com. Clap it up. So, you know, I, when I usually do these highlight sections, I usually have four to five, um, you know, businesses to uh, highlight. I only did two this week, not because I was lazy or anything like that, because those are the just most interesting stories that spoke to me, um, you know, because... The Sienna sauce and the mumbo sauce, they just like, they really, you sometimes, I don't know, it's just kind of like esoteric. Sometimes you just know what you're supposed to do. And it seemed like out of all them pages, like literally all week. Because I, I, when I do mine, these little segments, I do it weeks in the head, do the uh, research like all week long, and then I just share it over the weekend. But, um, out of all those pages of, you know, barbecue sauce, those two just kind of spoke out to me and I felt like it deserved um, some shine. So, but literally there's like thousands upon thousands of black owned barbecue sauce companies. And there's like a new one every single day. So, you know, you can always support black in that retrospect. Um, so yeah, on to my next section. This section is called the spotlight section. And in this section, what I do is I spotlight a prominent figure, black, uh, a fixture in black culture. Uh, it's usually in the entertainment industry. Um, Usually an actor, actress, athlete, public figure, writer, producer, director, comedian, um, just somebody in the entertainment industry that's, you know, really uses their platform to speak truth to power, um, speak on our cause, um, you know, and represents us well and uh, puts us in a uh, positive light and speaks on our issues, uses their platform to speak on our issues, uses their resources to help do their part. And, you know, I would like to further go on to say, I believe I started the wave of Spotlight because before I started doing my spotlight section, there was nobody on the internet talking about spotlight. Now, every single time, like, you know, podcast series and um, YouTubes and, um, you know, magazine articles, spotlight on this person, spotlight on that person. Like, I'm just saying, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I'm a to toot my own horn. I don't have a horn effect, but I got some type of effect. Because I think this is a special sound effect moment. I started that way. I said it. I started that way. Fight me. <laughs> um, my very first spotlight when I had started doing it was um, Kodak Black. So, um, and the reason why, uh, and this is like when I kind of didn't really even have a format yet where I would just, you know, just like compile a whole bunch of um, articles. And then shortly after that, I had, you know, devised this format that I'm speaking to you in now with each section. But, um, yeah, um, my first spotlight officially was on Kodak Black. 
it was an article I came across where he had gave um, air conditioners to, you know, the block. Supplied it in, like, Florida is super hot. So for somebody to go buy AC units for, like, an entire block, that's, that was bananas. But, you know, we don't never hear that. We hear always, like, and that's kind of perfect to segue into my speaking point a little later on in the segment. But right now, um, I just wanted to just tell you that, you know, what's inspired it, inspired me to start the spotlight segment. That was just my first spotlight. Um, this is episode, I've been doing it for a year, so this is episode like 94. And, um, excuse me, 95. Yeah. The 100 episodes winking at me. Um, yeah, this is episode 95. So I've been doing it for about a year now. So, but, um, anyway, Kodak Black was the one that inspired me to do my very first one. Because I got to thinking to myself, just all these black people to do good, positive stuff for our community. But, you know, we don't really ever hear too much about it. They always want to show us in handcuffs or, you know, fighting each other or, you know, dragging each other all up and down social media. And never nothing positive. So that gave birth to my spotlight section. And so since then, I've had well over, I would say, like 30, like well over 20 people that I've spotlighted since then. So you can go back to uh, fact check me, go into my um, episodes. I'm 95 episodes in, so you can like fact check me where I started doing the spotlight. But um, anyway, with no further ado, I will unveil today's spotlight. And today's spotlight is actually a um, public figure. Because for the last couple, um, seems like I've been doing a whole lot of actors and athletes lately. So... Um, She's probably been doing it for uh, much more longer than I'm going to give her longer than what I'm about to say, because I stumbled onto her page like, um, geez, I want to say late 19, like late 19, almost 20, when I started following her on online, start following her stories online. Um, Spotlight today is on Miss Erica Lachey. And, you know, if you know anything about the conscious community, she is like, she's definitely, her name pops up a lot. So, um, and the reason why I'm giving her a spotlight is because she's just always posting something, a message that's powerful and impactful. Um, she gets a lot of flack for defending black men. Um, and everything she posts is, you know, genuine and authentic. I don't really, you know, when I watch her posts, her uploads, nothing seems like uh, artificial. Because you can kind of tell people they just kind of you know, there for the camera, they got a shtick, they got a, they're, you know what I'm saying? They got a, a persona. So I don't, I'm not getting persona vibes from her when she does her uploads. I think, you know, when she speaks, she's shooting from the hit. She's speaking her mind and um, she's, you know, producing her um, point of view in an articulate, intelligent way. I've never really seen her attack anyone. I've never seen her 
do anything malicious to, you know, get her brand going. I've never seen her try to drag somebody through the mud or talk bad about somebody. All she does is just share her experiences from her perspective and um, really just speak truth to power on a lot of things, you know, black people go through. And she's just like a really impe- impeccable, uh, excuse me, impe- <laughs> impeccable, impactful speaker. I have a little tongue tied. I always get tongue tied, but yeah, that was more than the mouthful pause. Um, yeah, man, she's great. So like, you can follow her stories on uh, Facebook, Instagram. Um, Twitter, she got TikToks. I think she even got some Pinterest. If you, for the Pinterest people, like she's everywhere. Um, lovely, natural sister. You know what I mean. Little to no makeup. Very lovely. Like I said, well spoken. Well, very articulate. Um, she goes up the bat for black women. Um, to me, in my opinion, she is like you know the face for femininity. You know, she doesn't like, she don't throw on airs for the internet. What you see is what you get. Um, she don't, doesn't present herself as to be perfect. Cause a lot of these um, sisters with these little Bantu raps, they get here and you know, they burning their sage and they talk them all this goddess of the universe stuff and then they be foul. They be foul as they man, they be foul. But um Yeah, I'm not getting no you know phony baloney vibes from her. I believe she's really authentic. I believe she means what she says and says what she means. And it's always a treat every time she uploads. Cause you're always going to, you know, sure to take something positive away from, you know, her uploads. She always got a positive message, you know, and, you know, she speaks truthfully, you know, she, in all areas. So like, you know, sometimes it's a hard truth. Sometimes it's a subtle truth, but whatever she says coming out of her mouth, I believe her. I believe that's the truth. I believe she's telling the truth. So clap it up for Mrs. Erica Lachey. Uh, Much more success to you, my sister. I hope your um, brand and your platforms continue to grow. I personally have, you know, gotten a lot from, you know, your content that you post. It's very positive and inspiring. And um, I hope, you know, more opportunities present themselves for you to, you know, keep growing your brand and branching out and, you know, I know when your brand uh, grows and branches out, you're going to do the right thing and um, help where you can help. If you're not doing it already, just behind closed doors. But um, yeah, so clap it up for Erica Lachey. So I've been doing a lot of females too. I think I kind of like missed the ball because when I started doing them, I was like, my goal was to check, just after I noticed I was spotlighting a whole lot of males, I wanted to like balance it out. I'm going to do one week spotlight a male figure and then one week a female figure. So I don't know. I think um, the week before I had did like, I did two females like back to back. So hopefully it'll balance out. I don't know. My li- my fr- faithful listeners know this, but new people, they don't know this, but my bad. All right, see then. Uh, this thing is drawn to a close. I also like to interject. I try to keep everything under an hour because when you're just talking, 
without speaking points for more than an hour. It's not a podcast anymore. It's just a glorified rant. And I don't want to rant. I want my content to resonate with my listeners. And, you know, so on to the next section. In this section, this is the health and wellness section. And the reason why I do health and wellness tips is to, you know, do my part to help people stay ahead of that thing. Because it is my philosophy that, you know, to promote um, total wellness, uh, it's a complete package deal. So exercise. And, you know, mental health, you got to just exercise your mind as well as your body. Watch what you're putting in your mind as well as what you're putting in your body. And it's kind of, you know, spring or catapults back to my original plot of this whole podcast is to, you know, dispel the negative black stereotypes. We get we get bombarded with a whole lot of negative energy uh, images, get bombarded with a whole lot of negative audio, and it's purposefully and intentionally done to, you know, wreak havoc on our subconscious and wreak havoc on our bodies. Because when your mind is at this ease, then that's when illness takes root in the body. Then your body produces diseases when your mind is at this ease. And that's the way the powers that be kind of constructed the news system, kind of weaponized that to do that. Because if you're black, you can just kind of pick up on certain little uh, not verbal and nonverbal, you know, context clues that they give you to tell you that they're talking about somebody black. They'll say something like, you know, in the underserved neighborhood or, uh, you know, uh, it's a black this, it's a black that. Like crime is crime. Crime's crime. When two white people kill each other, it's just like a man 36 shot another man 42. And when we do commit a crime, they got the, you know what I'm saying? They have the need to say a black man standing woo woo woo. So, anyway, so my point was, I got a little off putting, beard a little off putting. Um, my point was, I just do this section to provide, you know, health and wellness tips to uh, keep you in sound mind and sound body.
thank you to think critically about something. Um, the last couple I've been, you know, I've been Um, all signs are pointing to another quarantine. Like when I first started doing it, you can go back all the way through my episode log. Um, when I first started doing this, I was talking about, you know, um, environment. I was talking about water shortage. But now that's coming back up. with some you ain't seen nothing
stay prepared. Um, we have imminent threats in front of us and prepare to act accordingly. Get you some um, passive streams of income. Get you passports. Um, start learning agriculture. Learn how to grow your own food. Um, stock up. Start stockpiling on your essentials. Your water. Your toilet paper. Your non-perishable items. Should be stockpiling up on those. Why the, you know, why it's kind of, you know, semi, why stabilized right now. Like inflation is getting bad, but it's not super bad yet. And just watch what I say. We got one more straw before the camel's back is broken. So just get ready for that. And again, I'm not here to spread gloom and doom. I'm just here to tell the truth. That is the truth. That is the truth. Something's like it's brewing. Get ready. Storm's about to hit. And if you don't want to get wet, you better pack your umbrella. That's all I'm saying. All right. This will conclude it for this episode of the Narrative Podcast. Thank you all for listening. Halsey Allen, Narrative Podcast. One thing I want you would like, would like for you to do to uh, help the podcast continue to grow Hit the download button, download this episode of the Narrative Podcast and all previously recorded episodes of the Narrative Podcast. And then also hit the like button as well. Um, and please support my poetry blog. It's called Halsey's Poetry Corner. And the address for that is www.mrhalseysblogs.com. And it features a brand new poem primarily every single day. I missed Monday and Thursday. I, I done said it time and time again, like the days I don't post, what happens? Let's see what happened with it. Is. No, because I am an artist. And sometimes the inspiration comes like really close to uh, midnight. I write all my poems in the moment. So when I start writing, I like. 11, 15, 11, 25, 11, 35, 45, finish it, proofread it, and um, if I post it, it'd be midnight, then it's not the next day no more. So it's not, you know, any point. So if it's like I want to go to the next one, I start writing it at midnight, then when I finish it, at midnight, then it's not Monday's poem anymore, it's Tuesday's. But um, anyway, so please uh, support my uh, poetry blog at www.mrhawsblogs.com. Uh, what you support it is to share all my posts on Instagram, um, whatever platform you have, wherever you see it, share it on the platform. stuff coming. Just, I guarantee you I have some more stuff coming. Uh, keep you updated as each project you know, develops. You know, I'm in the bottom of that is what you know about all my other projects. Um, yeah. So I'm in it right here. Thank you for listening. All the hours. In the podcast, sign it off. Make sure you have uh, Weekend. I do um, four broadcasts every single weekend. Uh, and always tune in to my random podcast. So just kind of 
regularly listen. Um, you know, get active. Become a narrator. That's what I call my listeners. My narrators. Uh, the reason why I call you all my narrators is because we all have the power to change the narrative. These little handheld devices. We have the power to That's what I want all my narrators to do. All the narrators to share their positive about black people and any other black culture on, the pro- on your other platforms. So, like I said, I'm uh, up out of here. Narrative Podcast, Harzi Allen, sign off. See you next week. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.